Call all you like Yahweh Bashem El Shai Bashem Kakadosh. Even all praise on and glory to Yahweh Bashem El Shai Bashem Kakadosh. And giving double honors to the elders and the apostles. A great millstone, the elder bishops, a great millstone. Who oh, well. Peace and salutation to the election. Shemiah Mahman is a mapa from the Great Millstone Plain Sable Camp of Philadelphia. And one another we lesson. Yahweh is the true almighty and powerful name of the Heavenly Father. Oh, well, you can cause God, Jehovah, Yahweh. True name is Yahweh, which means he is or he exists. By Shem is in the name. Yahweh Shai is the only begotten son of the Heavenly Father from the world. You can call Jesus Christ, Yeshua, and Christ. And true name is Yahweh Shai, which means he's the deliverer, the deliverer for the nation of Israel. And um, you Israelites ought to call upon your power for your salvation. Now you have it here. I have this article, which through the spirit, and <laughs> like I've been feeling this way in the spirit, and it just goes to manifest itself. So a significant shift: blue collar Democrats shipping are switching to Republican in deep purple. Pennsylvania. This is authored by Beth. What's that? Brahi? I don't know how to spell it, pronounce that. But via Epoch Times, the emphasis is ours. So it says nearly 59,000 registered Pennsylvania Democrats left the party in 2023. That makes more voters than fans needed to fill the capacity of the Franklin Fields football stadium at the University of Penn. Of the nearly 59,000 who left the Democratic Party, 36,950 switched to the Republican Party and 21 thousand six hundred and forty four switched their party affiliation to other the category the Pennsylvania Democratic or Department pardon me of state uses in its data to cover parties such as Green and Libertarian as the Democratic Party tilts further to the progressive left more historical traditional working class families are moving to the Republican Party both in terms of how they vote and how they are, are registered. Conservative political party strategist Charles Guerrero told Peapock Times there's a significant shift going on in the base of the party. He said the stuff we were taught in civic class simply no longer is it no lo is no longer it basically existed in this case where Republicans are the party of the country club set and the Bray and the Chabis crowd. Okay. You have it. The Chabis is a uh, basically uh, a white burgundy wine. And the Bray is a cream cheese. I believe that would be uh, just like <laughs> your, your aristocrats. Okay. And then... Um, that's what um when you go into really um the parties and their origins you have uh for instance between the plebeians and the patricians. So we're gonna get into it which the patricians would be considered your upper class right which would be eating the the the, the, the bread and i mean the wine the fine wine and the fine cheese okay and we'll just uh quickly um go into that um which first before we do we will qualify things via the scriptures because the history speaks about yeah, this uh, and political structure, this structure that's ruling, you know, with Esau, Edom. Okay, the wicked. 
So this is Revelation chapter 13. And also I'm going to get the book of uh, Daniel. Um, either the second chapter or the, or in the seventh chapter. the book of Daniel chapter 7 and going into verse um, eight okay I can start at seven it says after this I saw in the night vision this would be Daniel seeing the the, the different various uh, kingdoms are the great major kingdoms okay that ruled uh, and then behold the fourth beast dreadful and terrible and strong exceedingly and it had great iron teeth it devoured and break in pieces and stamped the residue with the feet of it and it was diverse from all the beasts the different various kingdoms okay uh, going to um, <clears throat> before it, you have the Greeks, you have uh, you know the Persian and the Medes, uh, the uh, Neo Assyrian and Babylonian Empire. Okay, uh, that were before it and had ten horns. Uh, the ten horns go into the EU of today, um, economic. European Economic Community formally and <clears throat> this would be your rebirth of your original ten um, or the European vassals alright states and such okay and it says and they give their power obviously uh, you know to uh, the beast being NATO okay when you go you know into the whole understanding of uh the beast okay um which is just nothing but rome reincarnated with uh america spear heating it all right having a hegemon okay it says i considered the horns and behold there came out among them a little horn being america all right before whom there were three of the first horns plucked up by the roots going into the French, the Spanish, and the British. And behold, in this horn were the eyes like the eyes of man and a mouth uh, speaking great things. All right. Now, go to Revelation 13 and going to and verse. <coughs> Eleven, and I beheld another beast coming up out of the earth, and he had two horns like a lamb. This beast is to be America, all right. And it says, and it had two horns like a lamb, and he spake as a dragon, all right. And you have it with um the two uh, major uh, political parties being the Democrats and the Republicans, which ancient would be your plebeians, which would represent your um, Democrats and your patricians, would be um, representing of your uh, Republicans. I repeat, plebeians are your common folk, all right, so-called, and then you have your patricians, which I believe go back to, like, patriarch going to fathers. Let's just go to that. I spelled I spelled patrician wrong. All right, so patrician goes back to member of the ancient Roman noble. Noble gonna mean from uh, good birth, reputed, reputed descendants of the original citizens. Okay, rank of nobles, of the senators, fatherly dignity. Go back to father. Okay, like a patriarch. 
all right, which you have in contrast with the plebeius or plebeian, um, which would be applied to noble citizens and higher orders of free folk in medieval and uh, Italian German cities, okay. Um, they'd be members of the lower class or common people, okay. Like you have it here, here in uh, Philadelphia, you have a Democratic Party. Mm, this um, uh, current mayoress is a uh, so-called black woman. Uh, she would be uh, considered of the common or, or lowest class of people, to either, although the, the Israelites are, which she would be uh, Israelite, probably a Judite or something of that sort, so-called Negro. And she would... Um, um, be uh, as a as a ple plebeian, all right, of a common pope, all right, instead of from a his uh you know a uh, noble vote uh, noble uh, from the nobility in the sense of how Esau have it, okay, because they see themselves as uh, being the nobility or the good birth, despite the fact them going back to Esau Edom, <laughs> all right. So yeah. You know, just, uh, you know, and they come speaking as a lamb and seeming all, you know, humble and uh, seeming to have good good uh, intentions. But as people have been um, going about, especially with, um, you know, the current day political spectrum, uh, most of these people that had um, their um, so-called um, uh, pick or choice for... Um, and these um, Democrats, they're now going to the Republicans, okay? So now, um, I have to get the precept where I was at, because I, I don't, I kind of lost my, my setting. But we'll get that, where I was at, going into the differences between the uh, Plavians and the Patricians, okay? So patricians would be the upper class, such as the wealthy landowners would be in the patrician group. Plebeians would be of the lower class, would be normal people in Rome. All right. The separations meant they would be completely separated. And plebeians could only marry people from, from or their social class and so forth. Right. Like it will be like how would a common person get with somebody of a noble birth okay which just think of it as uh, with Amalek Amalek is not gonna don't wanna marry the Goyim the cow alright and if you don't know who Amalek that's the small hats alright so let's um we can get like a a good we um image or something the fast track things even better. It'll be better. Okay. This whole political structure go back to ancient Rome. Okay, so plebeians, they made up 95% of the population. That's your common folks, so called Democrats. Plebes means many. All right. Now, root means to fill from Pele. All right. Plea. As much, right? From Perivi, per, per, much or mostly or para, paria, praya, right? Mostly. Old Persian, para, paru. Meaning much, much many from plethos, which is people. Okay. So let's um go back to that what I was reading from. I was pretty much reading from this, which I'll open up in a new tab. And it's very small. It's very wee. Um. But you probably can't see it. It says 
plagues means many. Mostly peasants, farmers, laborers, craftspeople, and shopkeepers could not take part in the government at first. All right, and hey, now you see, you know, <laughs> do democracy, you know, everything being as it is. And it says served in the military. Patricians, upper class, so-called Republicans of today, owned valuable land, house in the city, and villa in the countryside. Yeah, that's perfect. Held all government positions at first. All right. So, let's see what other information we can draft. It says in in time they gained being the plebeians more rights, such as veto tribunes and the twelve tables. All right. And then pretty much the patricians, many served as officials in the Senate for life. And Senate go back to being old men. All right. And it says that the patricians held all of the powerful positions in the Republic. Okay. Of Rome. All right. Because this is ancient Rome all over. Again, the rebirth of the Roman Empire, as we do know. Okay. The deadly wound that was healed. Okay. As it reads in the next verse, Revelation chapter 13 and 12, and he exercised all power of the first beast, the ancient Roman Empire, before the Western, yeah, uh, before him, and caused the earth and them which dwell therein to worship the first beast, whose deadly wound was healed, okay? And you had it, of course, with the Renaissance period, and fast forward. With the uh, Treaty of Rome, you know, all of these uh, various European vassals, uh, subjugates come back, okay, into rulership and Esau's power structure of the beast, the seven with the seven heads and the ten horns, okay. And there's another scripture I was just thinking about, but it escapes me. Um. Let's go back. Oh, I was thinking about um, Maccabees. Uh, maybe uh, let me see something. A Senate. I think like seven and yeah. This is a uh, first Maccabees. This is it. See, that's a 44. Yeah, this is, uh... The book of First Maccabees 8, chapter. Alright, it says here... I'll start at verse... 14. Yet for all this, none of them wore a crown or was clothed in purple to be magnified thereby. Verse 15. Moreover, how they had made for themselves a senate house, wherein 330 men, or 20 men, sat in council, advisement, daily, consulting all way for the people to the end that they might be well ordered. Okay. Um, I think that's the precept I'm looking for. Yep. All right. So, yeah, so you go into it with the Senate, okay, in this Greco Roman system. All right. The fourth beast diverse from the others. And so now, let me see. I'm just going to read maybe some more in that article, and then that will be pretty much it through the spirit. I just kind of like wanted to read about this because um, it's something that I definitely uh, noticed going about. They got like guys, they got this guy, he's like a uh, so called black man, Negro, and he's talking about vote Trump 2024. And, you know, 
<laughs> going into history with the Democratic Party wall. And I'm just going to show you the history. All right, behind it in this brief. So it says here, there's a significant shift going on in the base of the party. He said, the stuff we were taught in civics class simply is no longer the case. We're Republican Party or the country club, right? We went into that. And it says here, it says now, to a greater extent, the Republicans are the party of the working men and women, and the Democrats are the party of the privileged elite. It says the black voter registration are once reliably Democrat are Democratic, but now many have turned to the Republican Party. Brown voters are increasingly Republican. Yeah, we're talking about Latinos, you know, you Negroes, Latinos, all right, Native Americans, and a huge number at a time when the media constantly tell black and brown people that Donald Trump is a racist which we know he is, of course, he's for his people, and, he, and Donald Trump is an Edomite, all right? Um, we believe he's a Nero Caesar in a reincarnation, if you can receive it, but it says, and he's running up numbers of black voters unheard of by the Republican. This is an ex, like you got Lil Wayne, you know? I mean, you got the Israelite Kobe Covington, you know, um, Israelite foreigner looked like a so-called white man, but he's an Israelite. You know, dude is a Jake. When you go into it, you know this Jake right here. And Donald Trump actually showed up, uh, you know, to his fight. Um, you know, he's an Israelite. This dude's a straight up Jake, cool as hell too. He's a, he's an arse too, but he's a uh, cool. <laughs> you know, Lil Wayne and Donald Trump. You see that, Donald Trump and Lil Wayne. Okay. Yeah, and, and like it's like he's a celebrity. Okay. <laughs> but um, let's go back. Just you know, make an example. Uh, and it says um, people have been switching from the Democratic Party to the Republican Party for quite a while in Pennsylvania. He said there was at one time one million vote advantage to the Democrats by registration and now it's down for about a third of that of 8.6 million registered Pennsylvania voters as of January the 2nd there are 3,895,592 or 62 Democrats and 3,046,000 uh, four, 460 478 Republicans, a difference of 435,085 more Democrats than Republicans. Okay, Conservative Party strategist or strategist Charlie Guerrero, uh, Pennsylvania could be considered the most purple state in the United States, being a mix of the blue and the red. Uh, Mr. Guerrero said, noting that in recent years, Pennsylvania had has had a Republican de governor, a Democratic governor, a Republican-led legislator, and one U.S. Senator Democrat. One of the U.S. Senators, a Republican, and a congressional delegation split down the middle, a state house that was split 102 to 101, and a Senate that teeters on the edge of the terms of majority. It's a state that Donald Trump won eight years ago and lost four years ago. It's very divided. <laughs> All right, and like I can even say, like my mom told me that she voted for Donald Trump. <laughs> I think she's a, she was embarrassed at first, but no, the truth comes out. You know, she ended up telling me that she's uh, voted for Donald Trump. <laughs> this she's an Israelite, so-called Negro from uh, the South. <laughs> it said it is a state that can be won by either side, and I think 2024 is going to be closely con contested in Pennsylvania. 
whosoever wins Pennsylvania wins the whole enchilada. The certified 2020 election results in, in Pennsylvania counted Joe Biden with 8,055 more votes than Donald Trump. And like I say, there's a lot of fishy business going with that, allegedly. <laughs> you know, yeah, <laughs> the vote counting. All right, so says uh, I'm going to go to here. Uh, look at the economy. Clearly, it is a tank. This uh, array of issues, including people not feeling safe in their communities and illegal immigration crisis at the southern border. And even Biden himself has suddenly realized that fentanyl is coming across the border. And we're seeing Democrats at our party, looking at our party and believing that we can respond, respond to those issues, believing that we are more like them and better able to represent their views. He said, we're going to make sure that when these voters switch to the Republican Party, they can make the right decision. This is going to be a home for them, and we are welcoming everyone, no matter who they are, whatever background. That sounds very universal. And we have no criteria, he said. Every American would be welcome to find a home in our party because the issues that are strong for us and the ones that are strong for America. So that's what you hear a we statement. Yeah, you have it here. A, a hair voter arrived to cast ballots in the midterm election polling place at a school in Philadelphia. Uh, yeah, so uh, yeah, that's it. So um, uh, scriptures do speak about in biblical prophecy, and that um, it tells you that um, in Isaiah the nineteen chapter that um, the Lord. This is this Isaiah 19 and 2. I will set the Egyptian against the Egyptian, American against America. This is uh, uh, spiritually Sodom in Egypt, okay, the place of the captivity of the Israelites, okay, where we've been led to by back into Egypt again, all right, into double straits, all right, and um, the yeah, the modern day Egyptians, okay, are you Americans. And they will, shall fight one against another, uh, uh, one against his brother, and everyone against his neighbor, city against city, and kingdom against kingdom. And you can see the difference, okay? The variances. Uh, some of them people that have believed in certain parties and now believe in other parties or will fight against those others that didn't cross the line, you know? So, you know, we see the difference. Um, and this, uh, if we get to this election year, it's going to be hell. So <laughs> that's it, dude. The spirit. Hope you're edified by the lesson. Shalom to the elect.